Hi, you're watching Indicator and today I'm going to tell you how to be a powerful ruler according to Niccolo Machiavelli. <music> Niccolo Machiavelli, Italian Renaissance thinker, humanist and the diplomat, was the most brilliant contributor of modern political science and he is considered to be the creator of the idea of political realism. Niccolo himself was a high-level statesman from Florence who traveled a lot on diplomatic missions throughout the whole Europe before he was exiled by the Medicis. Imprisoned for a time, he later retired to his private estate and concentrated more on reading and writing and then and there he wrote his most famous book, The Prince. This book mainly is a reflection on the uses of power. A special thing about Niccolo is that he viewed the state as an organism, with its rulers as the head and the people as its body. And this book explains how a strong ruler's power should continue to grow constantly. By the way, Machiavellianism is a widely used negative term. For some people, it's the worst thing ever. Even the British philosopher Bertrand Russell, Nobel laureate, once called the prince a handbook for gangsters. Please note that this book was offered to Lorenzo de' Medici as a sort of job application. I'm talking about Lorenzo the Magnificent, de facto ruler of the Florentine Republic. And yes, Niccolo was exiled and imprisoned by the same family and not only imprisoned, but also tortured with the rope. The Priest is one of the many advice books for the rulers, but differently from the other ones, it doesn't frame its instructions around the Christian virtue. Machiavelli de-emphasized the importance of moral considerations and focused instead on effectiveness. To simplify, he stated that instead of being a saint, in the world of sinners, a prince must cultivate his power and ruthlessly crush enemies, unafraid to be judged as wicked or unscrupulous. So here are several tips Machiavelli offers for any would-be prince. Ends justify the means. It means that a good outcome excuses any wrongs committed to attain it. For example, once campaigning with illegal funds on the theory that if he wins the election, the end will justify the means. Or, or the officer tricked her into admitting her guilt. In this case, the end justifies the means. Or lying about someone's qualifications on the resume when trying to get a good job, like I do usually. Later, we would justify the lying by saying that it is a means to receive a larger income to provide our families more effectively. Or justifying the abortion to save the mother's life. A big example is a wartime. Men who would usually refuse to kill someone actually end up killing and justify it as duty to a cause with greater ends or life saved down the road as a result. However, the wrong justifications can be seen in some horrors in human history, such as Holocaust, the World Wars, bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and even 9-11. Certain thinkers from the past thought that to bring an eternal utopia or a perfect society, first we must unfortunately but inevitably kill innumerable people, because the goal the eternal utopia is so important that even genocide can be justified to reach that goal. On the other hand, Mahatma Gandhi stated that means are ends in the making and violent means will give violent freedom. Beware of causing another to become powerful. Beware of joining another forces with a more powerful state because it will destroy you. At least we have plenty of examples of fratricides and filicides in the history of Ottoman Empire. The tradition of killing the male hairs, called fratricide, is an act of a person directly or via using of either 
a hired or an indoctrinated assassin that ultimately results in the killing of their brother, or filicide, the killing of one's child was widely practiced in the struggle for the throne. It was introduced as a judicial royal policy by Sultan Mehmed II, who is better known as Al-Fatih, the Liberator, who opened Constantinople for Islam in 1453. The main justification for killing of innocent brothers or children was the preservation of public order and the prevention of civil wars in future. Sultan Mehmed's grandfather, Mehmed I, had to fight a long and bloody civil war against his brothers, which brought the empire near to destruction, to take the throne. This war lasted for 11 whole years, and this period is also known as Ottoman Interregnum. Shehzade Bayezid was a son of Sultan Suleiman with Hurem Sultan, and he was killed by his brother Selim with the support of his father in 1561. Shehzade Mustafa was also a son of Sultan Suleiman with Mahidevran Sultan, and he was killed in 1553 on the Sultan's orders. By the way, shareholding strategy in the business would be the same example, like buying back all of the shareholders' parts and preserving one's domination this way. If one is on the spot, disorders are seen as they spring up instantly and one can quickly remedy them. A wise man ought to follow the paths beaten by great men and to imitate those who have been supreme, so that if his ability is not equal to theirs, at least it will save him. To exercise the intellect, the prince should read histories of former top leaders to examine the causes of their defeats and victories and also to avoid the latter and to imitate the former. Keep your hands off the property of others because men more quickly forget the death of their father than the loss of their patrimony. Si vis pacem para bellum. If you want peace, prepare for war. Yeah, obvious. Employ both cruelty and kindness, as the situation warrants, recognizing that it is always better to be feared over being loved by your subjects, of course, if you cannot be both. Where possible, let the others do the dirty work. Anyway, you can subsequently gain favor again by cutting their heads off. But when it's about doling out the benefits, do it gradually, so that they taste better. But at all costs, avoid to become hated by the people. The mercenary captains are either capable men or they are not. If they are, you cannot trust them, because they always aspire to their own greatness, either by oppressing you, who are their master, or others contrary your intentions. But if the captain is not skillful, you are ruined the usual way. Be skilled in warfare, the only art expected of a ruler, and treat peace as nothing more than a breathing space to prepare for another conflict. To be more simple, devotion is always better than a good salary. Common objective is always better than money. Use deception as the central element of your statecraft. Mask your true intentions. Remain faithful to pledges only so long as they are in your interest. Remember that others will always be false to you, unless you ensure that their falsehoods do not pay. Be aware of surrounding yourself with powerful subordinates. Keep your own counsel and listen to only few advisors. Eliminate victorious generals and keep nobles weak and divided. Because always remember, he who is the cause of others becoming powerful is ruined. So this was my first video. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel because even Nicola Machiavelli would do so. See you.